Hey, what is up you guys? This is Rob and this is my 2022 Tacoma. So here's the thing guys, I've owned a car since uh, essentially since February of about 1600, 1800 miles on it, but I've never washed it since I got it. So it's time to finally wash it, being that's the first wash. I'm also going to do a nice graphene coating, you know, get some protection going. So I want to show you guys, you know, what my process is and how I like to protect it. You know, it's really important you want to keep the paint on your cars or trucks protected. You know, make sure you don't have one of those cars in 10 years, the clear coat's all faded off and all that. You want to try to prevent that as much as possible. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. So what do I use when I wash my Tacoma? Well, I actually use these for anything I wash. So as you can see, I do have here the foam cannon. So I actually have in here just this basic Megawar car wash. You don't need anything too special, guys. It's just a car wash. As long as it doesn't strip the paint. Of course, I use my pressure washer and gun setup. It's also the stool I use. Glass cleaner. Glass cleaner is always nice. The Megawar one actually works pretty well. I've actually been pretty happy with it. Started using it when I got to Supra. Ceramic wet wax. So I'm not going to be using that today because, you know, we're going to be applying a coating on it after. But this is what I usually use as a topper. This is nice. So you spray it on the car while it's wet and it mixes in with the water. And then it's a nice protective coating on it. I used to use it on the Supra. Worked really well. Quick detailer. So honestly, I just use whatever quick detailer I have on hand. I usually use it when I'm cleaning the wheels or any other areas I might have missed just to make sure it's extra clean. Fire shine. I just started using this one actually. So far, it seems pretty good. This is the Chemical Guys one. It has a nice, uh, nice black look to it. So I, I'm glad about that. This is the bane of my existence. This is the Adams Iron Remover. So it smells awful. You use this to remove contaminants because remember guys, you want to remove the contaminants so that whatever you apply sticks on. I bought it in this big old jug. As you can tell by the top with all the saran wrap. I'm trying to not let that smell permeate into everything because it smells awful guys. This whole area smells like it. I kind of can't wait till I'm out of it. I used a blower just for blowing off any water. Of course we have just the usual stuff. I use one bucket for the car, one bucket for the wheels. I do put a little bit of soap in them. I don't do the two bucket method anymore because, you know, I do the foam cannon and all that. And just when I think about it, it's not really as useful. There are a bunch of different arguments for it. Well, it depends what you uh, believe. Also do have a small detail brush in there as well. And then because we're also taking off contaminants, I want to show you guys something. So this is a clay bar. This is what a lot of people like to use. However, there aren't a lot of contaminants on the truck, so I'm gonna be using a clay mitt. This pretty much removes, I'd say, 80% maybe of what this would have used. I mean, this is definitely a bit more, uh, you know, marring on the paint, and it's a small area, so it's gonna take a lot longer. With this, I just got to glide it over the paint, and I'm good. Highly, highly recommend looking into one of these, especially if your car isn't that contaminated. Remember, the Tacoma really sits in the garage most of the time. I only have 1,600 miles on it. It hasn't seen a whole lot of, uh, you know, bad stuff yet. And then here is the graphene coating. We're going to be trying out the Hybrid Solutions one. I actually had done the ceramic spray coating to my Mustang, and I really liked it. But, you know, honestly, the bottle's running out. I figured why not try this graphene one, see how it is. And, of course, if you'd want to do interior stuff, I already did the interior, so I'm not doing that today. I do recommend 303 to your cleaner and protectant. Definitely great products to use as well. And then all my polishes and all that are up there. But we're gonna determine how the, essentially how is the paint looking after it's all clean. Because it's still new paint, so I'm usually not in a big hurry to paint it. So it's really gonna depend on just how many swirls are in the paint. All right guys, so now that's done. Let's get to the actual, uh, let's get to the actual washing. When you're washing your car or truck, you know, I just go by the usual rules you'll probably already go by. You know, first things first, of course, I use a pressure washer to go ahead and rinse off the truck. And then I go ahead and apply soap to it. You know, using the foam cannon really makes life a lot easier. So you can see I'm also doing the wheels while everything is nice and covered in foam. But then after that, uh, you know, then comes the fun part, which is using the washman, of course, to go ahead and take off the dirt. Of course, I go in the left to right motion. You will see, though, when I do the PPF. I, I don't care as much because, you know, PPF won't swirl, right? So it doesn't really matter. Then after that, it's time for the fun part, which is using the iron remover. All right, you guys, so now that the car is clean, you know, I just did a standard wash, 
Now it's time for the iron remover. So once again, this stuff smells awful. So you just want to spray it just all over the car. So what this is doing is it's going to remove all the iron here. I'm going to spray a little bit of it here on the wheels too. I'm not putting a lot of care to the wheels because honestly I'm replacing those eventually. So we're going to go ahead and spray it on. I'm going to show you guys what happens after and how it looks. I make sure to spray it all over the truck, you know, get it on everything. Remember guys, this is to help decontaminate the truck. So I actually just used up that whole spray bottle I filled up. Just went quite liberally, just like I said, get it everywhere. But just make sure you don't let it dry for too long. That's why I'm also doing it in on a cloudy day, just so the sun doesn't dry it on. And then after that, it's time to admire your work. All right, you guys, so behind the camera really quick. So it's really important you don't let this stuff dry on your paint, which is why you're supposed to do it when it's cloudy out like it is right now, because it gets really tacky. So you see the purple here on the ground? That's decontamination. So that is iron and other forms of contaminants stuck in the paint that the iron remover basically, uh, you know, it may come off. So now I will go ahead. So see, look, there's a little bit of purple right there. And yeah, once again, this stuff does not smell good purple right there so yeah now we're gonna go ahead and just power wash it off and then comes the claim it part now it is time to spray off the iron remover you know it comes off nice and easy remember the whole trick is don't let it dry on to the paint or else it will be a huge paint to remove and then you know after that's done you'll actually see I go ahead and I recover it up with foam so I did this uh, you know to essentially help declaim it so we're gonna go on to that next part Alright you guys, now I have the truck covered in soap again. Now for the claim it. So as you can see, nice and tacky sort of material. So just get it wet. And I'm just going to make sure that it is nice and moist. And what is nice is, you know, the whole front end is PVF, right? So all I have to do is on the painted part, just run it down. It's just gliding along. Now you see the other side does have cloths. Some dealers, what they'll do is they'll literally, as they're washing it, they'll clay it. But I already had washed it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this for the whole back end of the car. So the two doors and the bed. Once again, guys, PPF everywhere, because that's less spots you have to do this. So let me go ahead and let's get to that and we'll go on to the next step. Doing the claim it process, it's a slow process, but of course it is much quicker than if I was just using an actual clay bar. So once again, just running it over. So I did actually all do the PPF because I figure, hey, there might be some contaminants on there I might want to remove. As you can see, I'm also having to use the stool quite liberally just to make sure I can, you know, reach everything. And then after that, you know, that's just a matter of going ahead and rinsing it all off again. And then when that's all done, just one last dry, and then it's time to finally put the truck in the garage. You guys, so now as you can see, Tacoma's looking nice and clean and decontaminated. Glass is clean as well. So now it is time to put the truck in the garage and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna see how it's looking. We're gonna put an LED to it and we can determine, you know, do we wanna polish it or not? All right, you guys, so the truck is inside. The paint is good and cooled off. So I did decide I'm just gonna go ahead and do a light polish on it. The main reason being is I decided let's just take off all the defects because I just want the graphene coating to stick on as well as possible because this thing is going to see dirt, it's gonna see trails, so that I should have as strong a coating as possible just to make sure none of that stuff really sticks onto it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a light polish. So of course I do have my Griots polisher. I've used this for quite a few times already. Uh, you know, I use it on my Camaro, my Mustang. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to use my Supra. I use it on a few other cars though and I do really like it. I will just be using uh, just a lighter finishing pad. You know, if you didn't know, these are actually really easy to use. I mean, I used to be very worried about, uh, you know, burning paint and all that, but these dual action orbitals, they're not gonna burn anything. I mean, this this is really just equivalent to if you're really fast for rubbing at it, and let's face it, you don't have the power to burn through your clear coat. You're not gonna mess up anything. So I got the pad, stick that on there. Then we'll just be using, I still have some Griots polish I want to use up. So I'm just going to go ahead and shake that up. We're going to use that. So let me go ahead and show you guys how I do uh, one door. 
All right, you guys, so as you can see, I have my earplugs in, I have my gloves on. It's time to get going with this. I did tape off everything once again, uh, you know, just to make sure I don't get any polish anywhere. Now the polish remover I'm gonna use, it should actually be good enough, but uh, I'm just old school. I'm just kind of used to doing that. So first off, let's go ahead and we're gonna put the polish on. So some people don't believe in doing this, but I do think it's a good idea to just spread it out. That's also why I'm wearing the gloves. Go ahead. Spread it out on here a little bit. It's even coming off my gloves because it's all sinking into the sponge. Very good. Okay, so surface is good and clean. Go ahead and few drops, three drops. So I use a pretty common method you'll see, um, you know, if you go around on YouTube. So definitely, uh, you know, don't, don't worry about it, guys. Just find a tutorial even if it's not mine, and uh, you know, let's get to work. So we'll have it on one, very good. So we're just gonna do this square right here. So you see here's the door handle. Here's the edge. So remember, the nice thing also is I do have the PPF. So with the PPF, you know, that doesn't mean I don't have to polish any of this. So I do have tape though, just to uh, help distinguish it. So imagine as a square, I also did go um, you know, ahead and tape off the emblems. So let's go ahead and... Uh... Now, some people might say, you know, Rob, this is kind of a big area. You know, usually you want to do a bit smaller area, but once again, this is just an initial you know, this is just a light polish, guys. We're not doing any cutting, so we should be fine. So let me go ahead and let me spread this out. So I am on the lower speed, so speed one. All right. So I'm gonna be honest, you guys, I wanna put a little bit more polish. You know, like I said, I did do a slightly bigger than people usually say to do. So I'm just gonna put one more little spread right now. So remember guys, we do have the machine on the lowest speed. So we're just spreading the polish around, you know, get it all out there and nice and spread out over the door. So that way you can go ahead and put on the higher speed later and go ahead and really put that polish to work. Ways. So now we're gonna go on five and we're gonna go ahead and apply it. So the way I like to do it is left to right and then up and down. I'm just gonna do, um, we'll do four passes, all right? We'll do four passes. So check this out guys, all right? Starting now. All right guys, so as you can see, just left to right and up and down, just like I said. You know, you just don't have to get too crazy with it. It's really hard to damage your paint with these due to the way that the machines move and just because you know, you're not using cloth, which usually is what generates the heat when you see all those horror stories about clear coat being melted and stuff. So do you know, just go ahead and just, uh, you know, go ahead and have fun with it, be patient, and just keep on going. And there we go. This side is officially polished. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this last section of the door. Uh, you know, I left, I just left it off because I wanted to make a nice clear square for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this part. And then I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I then remove the polish and then what I look out for to make sure that everything, uh, you know, everything looks good. All right, you guys, so I went ahead and finished polishing the door. So now to take it off, I do have this Adam surface prep. So what this is for is, it's to take off the polish and leave a nice clean surface for, uh, you know, the, uh, the next part, AKA the graphene we're finally gonna get to eventually. There you go. I mean, it's essentially just like an isopropyl alcohol solution. Now we'll break through all of it. Put that down. It even smells like alcohol, Jesus. Marge, you guys, so while I'm doing this, I do want to make it clear I am using brand new microfiber cloths. I highly recommend this so that you don't use any old ones that have some leftover contaminants. Remember, guys, your paint is at its bears right now, so you want to be very careful about that. There we go. Let me do a quick little glove test. It's like running your finger on glass now. Perfect. 
Now remember guys, I didn't do any wet sanding or any of that kind of stuff, so I'm not taking out, you know, like the orange peel finish or any of that. That's okay, I'm, I'm all right leaving that in there. But a lot of these swirls are definitely gone, which is an awesome thing. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do this to the rest of the truck. So then we'll go ahead and get to the graphene part. All right, you guys, so the hard parts are finally done. Polishing is done. Uh, took off all the polish. Everything looks good. Nice, uh, smooth exterior. Definitely ready to go ahead and apply. So remember guys, this is the graphene we're trying out. Actually pretty happy. So I usually wear this jacket because I usually get a whole bunch of splatter off. Had a pretty good install, no splatter off, so not bad. So we're gonna go ahead. And so this one is only two sprays per panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and step over here. So two sprays on the door and then uh, pretty much you spread it around. So let's see. So this is a bit larger panel. So I'm just gonna do a third little spritz right there and then just uh, spread it. So what's gonna happen next is, I'm gonna just do this for every panel, so basically the whole car, which is completely fine, because then I'm going to go back over it with another microfiber and dry it all off. All right, spread out. Looks good, just like a spray wax, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this now for the rest of the panels. And then, uh, you know, honestly, there's nothing else to show. So tomorrow I'm going to do a second uh, coating of it just for a bit extra protection. So we're gonna skip ahead two days to when I'm gonna pull it out of the garage so we can finally inspect it. And we're gonna really see how it looks, especially in the sun. I'm actually really excited to see how this one looks. So we're gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and jump over to that. All right, you guys, so it's been two days. I'm actually going to work later. That's why I'm all dressed up. So let me go ahead and show you guys how the truck looks. It's out in the sun. So the turtle wax graphene flex looks really good. So check this out. So this is in the shady side. Let's go to where the sun's hitting it. So check out that shine. This looks really good, you guys. It feels like glass. And what's nice is that I definitely do think that this will be protecting, you know, the Tacoma, especially when I take it off roading and all that, you know, dirt's just gonna slide right off with water after that. Definitely looks really good. I do recommend this product. So remember guys, this is the Turtle Wax Graphene Infused Flex Wax. There it is. Highly recommend it guys. The truck looks like it just came off the showroom floor. Unbelievable guys. I am absolutely loving it. So if you guys have any questions about my process, any of that kind of stuff, you know, let me know. Uh, you know, as always, I love doing these kind of reviews. I love giving tips and all that, especially in regards to the Tacoma. So anything you guys want to say, you know, as usual, like, comment, subscribe. With that, guys, this is Rob, and have a good one.